Hello Captains, this is the Doctor and welcome to another video for Star Trek Online. In this video we're going to watch the Message from Another Time videos from the Temporal Reputation. Now you know that the Temporal Reputation is the latest reputation that's in Star Trek Online, just came out recently. It is obviously very science-based. Uh, I have now unlocked all five tiers of that reputation. So first of all, this is my character, the Doctor here. He is a science character, so it was perfect for me to open up this reputation on this character and test out all the gear, which I have been doing and there will be another video on for. But as you can see, if we go to reputation here, we are of course talking about the Temporal Defense Initiative reputation. This is the latest one in the game that has come out recently. And as you can see, I have now unlocked all five tiers. Now, what has happened is that when you unlock each tier, these little missions come up. They're called a message from another time. And as you can see, I've got five of them. Each one opens with each tier after you finish one of the tiers. And it says here, Starfleet has received a time-delayed encrypted log from Garrick concerning the work of another temporal operative. It is accessible from the ops computer at Deep Space Nine. Go to Deep Space Nine, go to Operations, and use the computer console to access logs from the temporal operative. So what these are are little stories uh, that basically kind of expand, I guess, the temporal missions that we've done lately, especially maybe from Future Proof, the storyline, and uh, should maybe just explain things a little bit better. They're not missions. You don't go play these. These are just little storyline elements. You go, you listen to it, see what they have to say, and that's pretty much it. Um, some of these reputations have those. I know the Terran reputation has something similar. Uh, some of these reputations go even further, like New Romulus reputation. It actually has playable missions after each tier. You go to the New Romulus homeworld and do some playable missions. Uh, but some of these newer reputations, they don't have that anymore. They just have these storyline missions. I think New Romulus is really the only one that has playable missions. Uh, I think Dyson Joint Command, it has something where you go to the to the, the Dyson Sphere and it also has some storylines you listen to. But yeah, I think, I think really New Romulus is the only one that has playable ones. Anyway, what we're here for today is the Temporal Defense Initiative. And I have not listened to these messages yet. I have no idea what they contain. This is the first time I've unlocked all five tiers of the Temporal Defense Initiative. So I'm going to be hearing these at the same time you guys are hearing these for the fr excuse me for the first time. So let's go straight up to Deep Space Nine, and uh, we're going to check these mes these uh, messages out. We'll listen to them and see how they add to the storyline. I'm very curious myself how this uh, what what this is going to add to the storyline. So let's just uh, transwarp straight to Deep, Deep Space Nine. We'll go straight there and uh, check these out. Um, if I don't think I have made a video on the Terran ones, so if, um, if I, I'll go back and check if I haven't made a video about the Terran messages, I probably will go ahead and do that as well, uh, because I don't think I covered that. If, um, if I have, then I'll, I'll link to it. I actually cannot recall if I have or not at this point. So we just go to operations up here, and our contact is this lady here, uh, Sarish Mina. And as you can see, this is where you can go check the Terran Task Force uh, logs as well, if you've done that reputation. That also has messages. But then if you've done the Temporal Defense Initiative, that's what we're here today to find out about. So we're just going to go through each one. Uh, they, the others will unlock as I go through them. You have to start with transmission one and go on and on and on, and then it should clear automatically from my mission list. You can see that's all I have here in my mission list is message from another time. One, two, three, four, and five. So let's do this. Sit back, relax. Let's see what uh, we have to listen to here. After action report, November 28, 2154, Commander Narrator reporting. Today is a Terran holiday called Thanksgiving, and after today's events, 
I'm inclined to start celebrating it. Large, flightless bird and all. <laughs> oh, so um, these are messages from the future. Uh, no, the past. Wait a minute. 2154. That's the past. The past, but yet it is a 29th century uniform. So she must be a time traveler. Nareda? Commander Nareda? She must be a time traveler because that is definitely a 29th century costume. And she must be in the year 2154, which is Archer's time, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm mistaken, but that sounds like Archer's time right there. It started when the Nakul extracted Dr. Eric Soon from prison. It seems they wanted him to devise augmentations for them. One of our agents tried to recover soon, but wound up getting captured. I oh. led a strike team to a compound where the Nakul were holding soon and our agent. One of them tried to shoot soon during the engagement. I took the hit for him. Thankfully, my shield was up to the challenge. Okay. Ending the soon line would have been disastrous. Starfleet would have lost its first android officer. Obviously. Stopping that is something to be thankful for. Okay, so uh, it sounds like these missions or these logs are from future time agents and their missions in the past, dealing with the Nakul, which is what the whole temporal storyline has been about, obviously, is the Nakul here, big part of that. Uh, so she must be in the past, the Nakul tried to take Soong, she stopped him, there you go. And obviously she's referring to Data, Data would not have come around if Soong, the, the family line was stopped at that point. Okay, so that's kind of cool. A time traveler from the future. We get to hear about her exploits in, in, in her time traveling missions. I like that. Let's see what number two has to say. After action report start date 9528.1, Commander Narrator reporting. There are days where the duties of my chosen profession are almost too much to bear. My assignment took me to the 23rd century and my homeworld, Cardassia Prime. Posing as an agent of the Obsidian Order was repugnant. But it provided access to the resources I needed to succeed. I, I, I completely missed the fact that she was a Cardassian in that first mission, in that first uh, transmission. I completely just glossed over the fact she is a Cardassian and in Starfleet, obviously, in the future here. So pretty cool. She has a 23rd century mission. A group of Nepkul working with local revolutionaries was planning to detonate a photon bomb in the marketplace. I exposed their operation to the Order. The response was predictably swift and final. Had an Akul succeeded, they would have started a chain of events leading to the founding of a Cardassian democracy in 2313. They would have also claimed the life of a five-year-old boy named Procal Dukat. Hmm. I have ensured the birth of Procal's infamous son and preserved the timeline. I have done my duty, but take no pride in doing so. Yeah, because Dukat ultimately was a villain so I do wonder what would have happened if she would have allowed a democratic Cardassia to take hold in the 23rd century. That would have drastically changed things in the future, but think about this. The Cardassians would probably not have aligned with the Dominion in that case. That would be a radically different future. Maybe better future, actually. I don't know, guys. Although she had to preserve the timeline here, I mean, I wonder what the results of that changing would have made. That's very interesting. Okay, let's go on to transmission three. After action report start at 55781.09, Commander Narrator reporting. If I never seek Polaris 3 again, I shall die a happy woman. Duty took me to that miserable sand pit today. That fool posing as Remans had come to recover the buried pieces of a soon type android. Designation B4. Oh, we know B4 from Nemesis. We intercepted the Nakul and secured all of the androids' components. They plan on programming B4 to cause a warp core breach on the Enterprise while it orbited Romulus. Thankfully, we stopped them. Wow. So, huh. Interesting, okay. Unfortunately, we didn't stop them before they dug up the android components. As a result, my team and I had to bury them again so Picard and his people could find them. I may never get all the sand out of my combat armor. It's funny how, like, the, uh, they are really, these, these time, um, time agents really are a part of, like, every important thing that has happened in Star Trek. 
uh, they're like the they're there in the background they happen you know they made these things happen so that all these things we've seen on screen could happen <laughs> all right let's go to the l no number four not the last one number four next to the last after action report start eight forty six eight fifty three point five commander narrator reporting I've just enjoyed an interesting visit to Terok Nor, or rather, Deep Space Nine. Our intel suggested that the Nakul were going to assassinate Sisko, and in a most unusual fashion, death by holosuite. Oh, really? I managed to gain access to the station's holosuite network, but I saw no signs of tampering or any scheduled appointments for Benjamin Sisko. Jake Sisko, on the other hand, was in a session. I hacked the suite and stopped a holographic baseball pitcher from throwing a 300 mile an hour fastball into Cisco the Younger's skull. Dang. What a way to go. I then tracked the assassin to a storage area. As I prepared to enter, the door opened, and the tailor Garrick walked out. He tapped his nose and smiled as he passed. Inside, I found the corpse of the lone Naku agent. As I said, an interesting visit. So is Garrick aware of these tamperings? Hmm, what role does he play? All right, the last one, transmission 5. After action report star date 49427, Commander Narrator reporting. Death has tried to claim me in many ways. Today's attempt was particularly novel. Command sent me to deal with a plot to destroy the USS Voyager. The Nakul intended to program an automated Cardassian warship to attack Voyager once it came into range. Hmm. They didn't plan on it considering them enemies, however. It killed the Nakul. And when I arrived, it tried to kill me, too. It seems that this dreadnought had been reprogrammed with a vigorous dislike of Cardassian. Ah, uh, I remember that episode. It dealt with a... Yeah, it, I, I vaguely remember it, I should say. It dealt with some kind of weapon that Voyager found in the Delta Quadrant. was some kind of Cardassian thing, and then Balana reprogrammed it. I'm, I kind of vaguely remember all that. Interesting. So that ties in with that episode, if you're familiar with it. I managed to escape, although leaving it there for Voyager to deal with was difficult. I greatly dislike being shot at, especially by an idiotic robot starship. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, there you go. There's the five transmissions for the Temporal Initiative, the Temporal Defense Initiative uh, reputation now. Now, that obviously did not really offer us a whole lot of background information like I thought it was. I thought it might deal more with the, um, the whole future-proof storyline that we've been dealing with, with the whole Temporal Cold War and everything. It was really just the logs of a time-traveling agent and some of the missions that she went on, which is cool to see. Um, it's, it's filler, basically, but it is cool to see, you know, from another perspective of another time agent, you know, what they have to deal with and the things they actually go through. So these things are happening in Star Trek then we just don't know of, these future time travelers that are making sure things happen right, especially during the Temporal Cold War. And the Nakul are obviously trying to really mess with things, and so she's part of trying to keep everything together. Obviously from the 29th century it looked like there. So just a little bit of filler, just a little bit of more, more information on that. Um, pretty cool. Um, I guess the big thing, though, is that now I have all five tiers of the reputation open I can show you guys what all the gear is like inside this reputation and I'm going to make a whole video dedicated to that um, you will notice on my personal character right now I have the temporal defense initiative combat armor I have the temporal defense initiative personal shield and I have the uh, Temporal Defense Chronoton Dual Pistol. So I've got the full ground set so I can show you what that's like. In addition, on the space side of things, I've got the Temporal Defense Initiative Deflector. 
I've got the Temporal Defense Initiative Combat Impulse Engine. I've got the Temporal Defense Initiative Overcharge Warp Core. And I got the Temporal Initiative Regenerative Shield Array. In addition, I have the Advanced Temporal Defense Chroniton Torpedo, the Temporal Defense Chroniton Beam Array, and then the console, which is the Chroniton Drive Actuator. So I have the complete space set as well on a Temporal Multi-Mission Science Vessel. So I can fully explore all of the gear space and ground that the temporal defense initiative reputation has to offer i'm going to make a specific video about that it'll be its own video because there's a lot there to talk about and to demonstrate i want to demonstrate for you the space and science powers and everything it can do and all that stuff so i'll make a separate video on that um so stay tuned for that i hope you all enjoyed this well, anyway uh thank you all for watching and stay tuned for the next one